welcome you to the Greater High Street Missionary Baptist Church Virtual Worship Service. Today is the first Sunday in November as we make our way towards the end of this year. Today we are celebrating the Lord's Supper and we ask that you would, would prepare your elements as we celebrate what Christ has already done for us. Today we've come to give him the glory and magnify him. Not only for what he has done, but because of who he is. He's our Savior, he's our King, and he is our Lord. So wherever you are, lift up your voice and give God the praise that you worship him.
Thank you. 
preaching this morning is found in uh, one of them is the, the prophet is perplexed. He's perplexed because God is not punishing iniquity. All right. He's perplexed. Mm -hmm. And keep in mind that uh, this book, as right, I've been led to, is reflective of the time in which we live. All right. Not only is the prophet perplexed in verses 1 through 4, but then the second uh, point in our outline is the Lord is going to reply <laughs> how he is really it may appear to be silent, but he's still watching. I don't know. And third movement, and that's verses 5 through 11. But then a third point that we want to raise is uh, God is being questioned by the prophet. Uh -huh. And he's raising some questions. We will see the question that he's raising. And uh, that's four. Uh, but then... Uh, we see that, that's verse 3, but God answers. His answer is what is taking place. And then we want to close on Habakkuk praise and trust God. All right. uh, and perhaps you will find yourself, perhaps this day, in chapter 1 of your life. All right. And you may find yourself in chapter 2. Right. Or you may find yourself in chapter 3. Really? And when we look at the times in which we live, these are indeed unprecedented times. Yes. We're living in challenging times. Yes. And we find ourselves crying with the prophet yes. as the people of old were uh, dealing with some of the issues that we're dealing with today. Yes. For these are generational issues. Each generation has its own challenges. Yes. Each generation has its own viruses. Each generation uh, is mad about something, angry about something. There's civil unrest. There is violence and there is bloodshed. There is a brother against brother. There's nothing new under the sun. Uh, there's always a, a COVID-19 of a different brand. For every generation. Yes, sir. And so we find ourselves crying with the prophet of old, even Jeremiah, was wondering why things were as they were in his time. In Jeremiah 8 22, he asked the question, Is there no bomb in Gilead? The right. Are there no positions there? Why then is not the help of the daughters of my people healed? The psalmist wanted to know in Psalms 13, he wanted to one through two. How long? How long will you forget me, O Lord? Will it be forever? How long will thou hide thy face from me? How long shall my enemies exalt over me? How long? And this prophet is considered as the uh, the doubt Thomas of the Old Testament. Uh, his name indicates that Habakkuk, the rational with Jehovah. Uh -huh. uh, but then some uh, uh, perform his name as the embracer of Judah. Uh -huh. And so when we look at, at how we uh, are situated in this day and time, my sisters and brothers, we need a prophetic word from the Lord. Yes, sir. Yes. And we too ask how long? Yes, sir. Lord, how long? Uh, will there not be help? Lord, how long? And, and you don't seem to be listening. And there's violence in the land. And, and we want to know how can we be saved? There's injustice in the land. And Lord, you seem to be silent. We want to hear from you. There's so much wrong going in our community. And those of us who are the children of slaves, we uh, have we been, our men are being shot down and boys like dogs in the street and, and we're shooting each other down yeah, yeah. like dogs in the street. Yeah. It works both ways and the very institutions of democracy, the democratic institution of democracy in our time, 
being destroyed. When you see that even the, the most powerful man in the world was spewing out lies out of his mouth for the most powerful man promoting violence and division and hatred. This has happened before. There's nothing new under the sun. Justice seemed to be perverted and God seemed to be silent. Well, I brought some good news. I brought some good news this morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not from the Fox News. Right. All right. All right. All right. Not CBS. Right. Not MSNBC. Right. 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 No, I brought some news from the Divine Network. That the silence of God does not mean the absence of God. Right. 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 When the right seem to be on the scaffold. And Rome seemed to be on the throne. There stands God Almighty yes, in the shadows, yes, watching over his own. Yes, sir. That's the God we serve. Yes, sir. And then when we look at the context of the text, it's found in chapter one. This is the context, this is the background uh, of chapter one, the time in which uh, this minor prophet wrote. There, it was a deplorable condition. Uh, this was the time that when men were basically law to themselves. And this was, he was writing prior to the Babylonian exile in 586 B.C. This was a time in which we, uh, which, which, uh, we find ourselves today like where we are today. Habakkuk signifies the embracer. The embracer, that is one of the names in which he is known by. The embracer, the one who embraces another, who takes him in his arms. He embraces his people and takes them uh, in his arms. He comforts them and holds them up as a weeping child in the arm of the father. Yeah. And the theme is we walk by faith yeah. right. yeah. and not by sight. When we look at chapter 1, verse 1 of chapter 1, uh, we can see, my sisters and brothers, that the burden which Rebecca the prophet did see. Yes, yes. Look at what he saw. Yes, sir. The prophet did see. He saw that. Uh -huh. God let him see it. He saw what was going on. And, and he wanted to know why. And Rebecca referred to it as a burden. Uh, it's a burden. It is something that has weight. It is something that is weighty. Oh, yeah, yeah. It is a charge to keep. Yeah. I have right. a God to glorify. It, 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 it is weighty. And, and those who, uh, who have embraced, you heard Sister Green, it says, I've been redeemed. Yes, yes, yes. Well, if you've been redeemed, you, there's a responsibility yes, for having been redeemed. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. You have a role. Uh, you shouldn't take your responsibility like that. Uh, you must discharge your duty with faithfulness when you've been redeemed. I mean, shown up redeemed. And then uh, Rebecca uh, says uh, in, in verse 2, Oh Lord, how long? How long you make this burden? You've caused me to see it now. And, and, and I want to know, I visualize it, Lord. I get it. And as a result, it's bothering me. It's bothering me. And so he asked the question. He asked God the question in, in verse number two of chapter one. He says, now how long? I see it. Yeah. Now how long right. are you going to put up with this? Yes. Yes. Lord, how long? Yes, sir. And God, you, you seem to be silent. And I'm perplexed yeah. because I'm wondering how long. Silence is wickedness of mankind. And here you're putting up with it. There's iniquity all around and you're putting up with there's violence and there's vice all around that's surrounding your people all around. And I want to know in verse 2, how long you're going to put up with this? I'm crying violence and then you don't do anything about it. You just let it happen. We're surrounded by iniquity. Oh, but Lord, what, what's, what's going on? How long? And then that begs the next, next question. After he asked how long, in verse 3, he asked why. Why, why now? We, uh, we tend to ask that question yeah, yeah. when we when, when things are bound in our life. We ask why. Why, Lord, does it happen to me? Why, why Lord, why? That's the question. 
question that he's asking now. Then there's a, there's a, and, and God will allow us in righteous anger, not in any disrespect, but in reverential mindset. He will allow us to ask questions, but not in disrespect, not in disbelief. God will come commit that. Oh, the Bible, you know and the Bible, and the Bible that's, that's, it's like what is going on in this day and age, my yes. sister and brother. Uh, it, it is before me, and, and they, uh, and, and then it says, and there are that raise up strife and contention. Strife and contention, we see it all over. It's coming throughout the land. It's been spread. Division and divisiveness and hatred, that's all over. It's, it, it's already been written. And so all we have to do is to look at the, at the scripture and we will see that answer is in the scripture. It has happened before. And so we have to see ourselves in the context of the scripture. And then in that verse 4, therefore the law is slack. He is asking questions. He says, the law is slack. It is slack, Lord. And, and, and judgment that, that never goes forth. Uh, for the wicked, death compass about the righteous. Therefore, wrong judgment proceeding. We have an attorney general that's in charge of justice department, but then is attacking the very justice that he is seeking to espouse for his injustice. His justice is supposed to be from promoting justice, but promoting injustice. It's in the book. Yes, sir. Book. And so the uh, it's violation of the law, which the prophet point to more specifically, he said, the justice goes forth, and the wicked just seem to encircle the righteousness, and wrong judgment is proceeding, and you are signed up, and you ain't saying nothing. Yes, yes. Yes, sir. It's the law of God that brought the evil of your law. And you silence. But then in verse 5, he has them to know God shows up. Yeah. And when God shows up, he shows up. In you remember Job? Job had all those questions. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, he wanted to, to argue, he wanted to present his case before God. Uh -huh. So he can argue yeah, yeah. his case before the Lord. Yeah. And you argue all the way for about 30 chapters or so, and then God showed up. <laughs> God showed up! Yes, sir. And he showed up in yes, a world. And that's Job who says, uh, Where were you? Yeah. When I made the foundation, yes, where were you? Yes, sir. And I called the morning stars to shine together, to sing together, to dance together. Where were you? Yes, when I made the foundation of the world, where were you, Job? Yes, sir. And Job says, I've talked too much already. Yes, and so he showed up. Yes. And then God said, This is what I'm going to do. Begin in verse, verse, verse 5. He says, uh, I, I'm going to, and you're going to be amazed. This is going to happen back in your lifetime. You're going to be amazed. Or you're going to be amazed that I'm going to, I'm going to raise up the Babylonian and use that interchangeably with the Chaldean. He says, I'm going to raise them up yeah, yeah. to be ruthless and an impetuous people yeah, yeah. who will sweep across the whole earth. And they'll seize dwelling that are not their own. That, and they are feared and a dreaded people. They uh, consider themselves as law unto themselves. They don't respect anything but themselves. They are their own law. That's happening in our lifetime. No respect for the law. No respect for the, the, the established institutions of our time. They are laws unto themselves. And they promote their own arm. And their, their horses are swifter than leopards and fiercer than the wolves and the dust. Uh, their cavalry blow head long, and, but their horsemen come from afar. And they fly like eagles that will sweep and devour. And they will come with intent on violence and they will wreak havoc across the land. And then the 
come back and says, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Lord, I get it. But then I have a question now, Lord. All right. So since all of these are going to happen, says, I know Judah has done wrong. I, we, I, we admit that they've done wrong. But then, Lord, why all right. would you use a people so much more wicked mm -hmm. than Judah to punish your own people? My, why? My, my. You want to send somebody like this uh, to be uh, our judge. Mm -hmm. So much more wicked than I. I'm trying to understand this. And then uh, after he goes through this litany of, of how terrible they are, and then we find ourselves then in, the, in chapter number two, uh, whereby uh, he asks the question, he says, I will be glad. He says, this is faith now. Uh -huh. This is the walk by faith, the theme of walking by faith. He said, right. uh, then he says, what I'm going to do then, I will stand upon my watch uh -huh. and set me upon the tower yes, sir. and will watch to see what he will say unto me. Uh -huh. And I shall answer when I am reproved. Right. Sometimes we have to wait on God. Right. Yes, sir. After he has petitioned and prayed uh, uh, to God and, uh, and petitioned uh, uh, to God, then God answered. And God answered. He says, uh, and, and I'm going to get in my watchtower. Sometimes we have to get in our watchtower of faith. Yeah. 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 Whether or not it is in your prayer closet or whether or not it's in your prayer time. Uh -huh. Whatever you're going, whatever you, you're dealing with, you ought to get in your watchtower of faith. And then just wait. Sometimes we have we move too fast, right, right. but we need to wait on God yeah, yeah. and see what His plan is for our lives, and to understand what is going on in our time from God's perspective. Yeah. And this is the most important principle for us to believe today as well. Mm -hmm. Whether we call it our quiet time, our devotion, or whatever terms we need, we you, you, we use, we should just wait on God. Get yeah, up in there and just wait on God. Yes, sir. And then look what God tells him while he's waiting. This is the faith portion of where we share. He says, uh, and I, and verse 2, and the Lord answered me and said, right. Right. Write the vision. He's giving him the vision. Mm -hmm. He says, write the vision and make it plain. Right. Upon table, tablets, mm -hmm. tables, right. that he may run that read it. Uh -huh. What I want you to do is I'm giving you this vision, uh -huh. and I want you to write the vision down. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And the vision is my answer mm -hmm. to your question. Right. Uh -huh. And then, and, and, and when, when you write it, I wanted to uh, uh, put it on the billboards. Right. 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 Yes. And then I wanted so large uh -huh. that somebody running uh -huh. or walking uh -huh. or passing by right. can read it. Read uh -huh. it. Uh -huh. And then when they read it, yeah. to pass it. That's what we have to do. And, and then we're going to wait on God. It's going to pay off after a while. And the vision is what I'm going to do in your day. What I'm going to, I'm going to raise up the Chaldean or the Babylonian that will come and punish my people. And then what I want you to write down and what's going to happen to them. You walk by faith because you're going to be all right because I'm going to raise them up and then I'm going to destroy them. That's what God will do with your enemies. The enemies that you see today, you will see them on their time in one way. And they will be smitten before your face and then three such ways. What's what I'm going to do? Yes, sir. But you got to, it's, there's a prerequisite. All right. And that is you got to walk by faith. You got to walk. You got to believe in me. You, you got to walk by faith. Yes, sir. That is because faith and fear uh, cannot coexist. Uh, faith and fear cannot coexist. Uh, A mountain and your faith cannot coexist. Uh, it's either going to be the mountain removed uh, or faith removed. Uh, but that's what's going to have to happen if we hold fast to faith. Our feelings, our experiences, and our environment around us will catch up to our faith. And what we have to say here at Heinz, there's a motto we call 
of things that be not as no, though they were. Right. When we look at a thing uh -huh. that is not so, uh -huh. uh, we have to say that it is so right. until it becomes so. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Act like the thing is so, even when it is not so, in order that it may become so. And so that is, uh, at some point in time, you're, it's whatever you're going through will catch up with your faith. Right. But you got to call those things that be not yeah. as though they were. Yes, and then, this is what another aspect of faith is, is that only little faith hides when it is tested. Yeah. And when you're going through something and you, and you, 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 you come unglued, you become discombobulated. Uh -huh. My big boy faith. Big faith stands against the testing. Yes. It's false faith that falls apart. All right. And genuine faith that will stand throughout the trial. Yes, sir. Where are you? Yes. Hence the genuine faith you can meet any test head on right. and still remain standing. Amen. Right. That's, what, that's what the big faith is. Now, most Christians expect to see the results of their faith as soon as they articulate it and as soon as they believe. They want to experience victory the very moment that they believe. But the real test of faith is found among those who believe God long before the victory is manifested. How long can you believe God? Three hours? Three days? Three months? Of three years. Right. Where is your faith? Right. Faith is no <laughs> building an ark yes. and no water inside. Yes. Right. Faith is uh, marching around the wall, yeah. Jericho, yeah. seven times yes. Yes. with no construction crew inside. Right. 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 And then the walls come. I'm going to Faith is wrestling with the angel of God all night long and continue to until you get blessed. Yes. Faith is like walking on the water to Jesus. Faith is watching for the proper son, not knowing when he or she is coming home. Faith is kneeling at the cross yes, until the resurrection comes, right. until my hope comes. Yes, sir. Faith is waiting for the rapture yes, sir. to come. Yes, sir. Walk on yes. by faith. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And in chapter 3, as uh, Habakkuk writes, he says, It's a prayer of Habakkuk the prophet. Yes. It's a prayer of Habakkuk the prophet. Yes. And when we look at the prayer and praise, mm -hmm. uh, when things go wrong in your life, My Lord. you ought to try praying. Yeah. 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 Pray your way through it. Yeah. Pray. When things are going wrong in your life, uh -huh. you ought to praise your way right. through it. Yes, sir. You'll get an answer. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. May not come when you want it. Right. Right. But I declare, he's right on time. <laughs> I serve an on time God. I don't know about you, brother, but I serve an on time God. He may not come when I want him, but I declare he's yeah. right on time. Yes, Sometimes, and it's unfortunate, those are part of the body of Christ. Mm. Those are the power, power of the redeemed. Yeah. We have negative view of life. Mm. But God wants us to have a positive view. Of life. Yes, sir. Sometimes, as a result, we make bad choices mm -hmm. because of our negative perception, mm -hmm. because of our negative view of life. I'm sure we're a little humorous, but here was this lady who uh, went to, uh, was out of a job, but she went to this citrus farm and tried to get a job and uh, asked the foreman. The manager uh, who was over the phone, are there any jobs available? Yeah. And he told him, said, yes, the only job that's available 
of ones uh, for a part-time lemon pickup. All right. That's all that's available yeah. uh, in this part-time. Those have been taken. I just need a, a part-time lemon picker yes, right. to pick lemon. Yeah. And says, uh, she says, well, the job just might suit me. And after he and asked her some questions, he uh, asked about her education. You know how we go down on the resume uh, and ask the questions uh, about your previous job experiences. And, yeah, yeah. and then once he ascertained uh, her resume and her qualification, her educational background, and then uh, he says, this job, you're too qualified. All right. You're highly qualified, too highly qualified for this lowly job. Right. She said, but I need the job. Right, right, right. He said, I still sure like the job. She said, I'll be good at it. <laughs> he, he, says, uh, said, he said, but then let me ask you this. He said, do you have any experience yeah. of picking lemons? Right. <laughs> do you have any experience in picking lemons? Mm, I know that. He said, well, she said, what you say? Uh -huh. She said, do you have any experience yeah. in picking them? Right. And she thought about it for a while. She said, oh, yes, I do. <laughs> she said, I've been divorced five times. <laughs> <laughs> been divorced five times. <laughs> but too often people have a negative view of life. And that's God does not want us to have a negative view. God wants us to be positive. People of hope and expectation. But they learn to wait on God. And you have to pick the lemons. Then you end up picking some other kind of fruit. Now that's out on the limb. Isn't God all right? Yes, So let me say a word as I prepare to leave. That how pray we should praise God in spite of. In spite of what you're going through, yes, right. a praise reveals our true belief. Yes. It's an expression of what we are on the inside. Yes. It's what's on the inside that counts. Yes, right. He wants to know what is the beef. Yes. Praise refocuses our thinking and feeling. Yes. It takes your eye off of your immediate problem yes. and puts your eye on God. Yes. It, it puts your, your eye on God. It, re, it, 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 it redirects your focus. Uh -huh. Praise is, uh, is the route to a deeper fellowship with God. Yes. It's about the relationship yes. that we have with God. Yes. Yes. Praise is established. The reign of God in our lives. Praise reinforces the truth of who we are and who God is. That's why we need to close the walk with yeah. God. Yeah, we see that sometimes uh, we're tarnished and stained by life. But don't let the circumstances mess you up. As I close, we need to understand that waiting on God will pay off. Yes, sir. It's going to pay off. Yes, sir. Serving the Lord will pay off after a while. Yes, sir. When you've been uh, tossed about like this prophet, uh, when the prophet number one is perplexed, uh, as to why God is not punishing the iniquities of Judah. Mm. Uh, but then secondly, God replied, he will use your enemy. Mm. Right. Then sometimes he'll use your enemy right. to punish his people. Mm. And yeah. thirdly, uh, Becca now question God, uh, why you want to use somebody worse than us uh, <laughs> to punish us? Mm. We can't question God's method. Right. He made us. Yes, he did. And he's in charge of this world. Yes, oh, we're going out the boat, but God is in charge. Yes. Yes. God has not turned this world over to any Republicans or Democrats or Independents. Right. It's, it's a cosmocrat. God is in control. Yes, yes, yes. God's answer is that the just yes. shall walk by yes. faith. Yes. And then, as I leave, the back of praise. He trusts God. All right. And what he's doing, he's appealing to God to act for his people in chapter 3 of your life. He reveals God's care for Israel, how he brought Egypt, Israel, out of Egypt right. through the Red Sea and, and, and devastated the enemy. God brought us. He, he has brought us as a people of mighty long way. Right. But he will wait on the enemies. Your enemies will be punished. Yeah. That's what he's telling them back up today. And so 
uh, no matter what happens, he will uh, trust God. Yes, right. And that's where we are as I leave my sisters and brothers uh, in, in, this, in this chapter 3. And, and I like the close of it, how Habakkuk closes it. Uh -huh. uh, he says, uh, I, I, I know where we are. Right. Things don't look good right now, maybe in your life. But he says, when the fig tree shall not blossom, right. yet will I trust in God. Yes. Even when the fruit, <laughs> no fruit on the mind, yes, yes. still don't trust in God. Yes, right. Even when the labor of the olive tree shall fail, yes, yet yes. will I trust in God. Yes, when the field yeah. bears no deeds, I'm still going to trust in yeah. God. Yeah. I don't care if my flock <laughs> cut off from the fold. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to trust in God. Yeah. I'm not worried in no hurry. Right. Uh, in my soul. Yeah. yeah.
contrary to the will yeah. of God. Yeah. And you want to become a part of our fellowship. I would love to have you at Amen. Yeah. In our fellowship. But we want you to be saved. That's yeah. the challenge. Yeah. Yes, Lord. We want you to become a part of some church. Some Bible believing, Bible teaching yes. church. Yes. But you can walk in the newness of life. Yes. You can come and have a Christian experience. Mm -hmm. Certainly by accepting Jesus Christ as yes. your personal yes. Savior. Yes. And that he died yes. and rose again yes. for our yes. justification, oh. sanctification, and glorification. Oh. If you can believe that, mm. he is the son of the living God. Mm. Oh. Mm. He will be baptized and then be saved. That's yes. what we want you to be saved. Yes. Yes. That's our charge. Church without walls. Yes. Come to him today. Yes. Come to him today. Amen. 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 Father, we thank you so much. Thank you, thank you Lord. Yes. For this awesome burden. Oh, yeah. This awesome weight. This awesome responsibility that we have mm. to tell the dying world. Oh, yes. Even in these unshallowed times, in these unprecedented, unprecedented times, Jesus. to tell a dying world. Yes. That you live and be saved to the utmost. Oh, yes. And the name under the sun whereby men can be saved. Except by the name of Jesus. And that the name of Jesus. Every knee. Every knee. bow. In the tongue of God. The new Lord. God. Save you. Thank you right now. Thank you. Thank you. We stand on the interpreter of your word. Oh, yes. As the word has gone forth, it will not return. In Jesus' name we pray.
first song, Travis, and then we have Sister Hattie Johnson. And we just like to lift all of those up who may be ill or sick or even bereaved. Uh, we want to lift them up to God in prayer. After we have prayed, our pastor will come and lead us in our community service. Shall we pray? Father God, we thank you. We thank you, God, for the opportunity to walk by faith and not by sight. We trust God, but yes. your son has done for us. He shed his blood on Calvary's cross to save a sinner just like me. And so, Father, we come at this moment to ask for your blessing. We ask, God, that you would forgive us of our many sins those that we have committed and those that we have omitted. We ask God that you would bless us as we do this in remembrance of the sacrifice that our Lord and Savior Jesus made so long ago. We we'll give you all the honor, all the glory, and the praise. It's in Jesus' mighty name we do pray. We say it together. The wine symbolizes the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that was so freely shed for us on Calvary. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. And as often as we drink it, we're showing forth his death and suffering until he comes again. May we drink together. Where it says the next time I meet. 